So I started buying this property when I was about 25 years old. So we've, as a family, we've owned it since 1950 approximately. And it's about 170 acres. It is on the Niagara Escarpment. Probably half of it goes, is rented by a local dairy farmer who grows hay for his dairy farm. I raise some bees. We've got probably 15 beehives. And of course, the hay is great for the bees, uh, as is the pollen from the conifers. And the rest is all forested, most of which was done by Credit Valley Conservation. As well as the many recreational and aesthetic benefits of planting forests on your property, the long-term climate implications are also a reason that CBC remains committed to this long-term. It's also a great way to encourage wildlife, create habitat, as well as create uh, cooling shade for your property. Also, it helps prevent erosion and help limit drought. All these benefits really help build resiliency on Bart's property. When the family first bought it many decades ago, which I used to visit as a little kid, there were few trees on it. We've probably had six or seven plantations planted since then that, that are now mature trees. The wildlife was almost non-existent, maybe a few deer. Now we've got coyotes, turkeys, which were introduced, as you know, about 20 years ago in Ontario, rabbits. This is about creating an environment for my family, my extended family. Yes, it does help uh, capture carbon by having trees. I'd like to say that was my primary, primary reason for doing it, but my primary reason is to create a beautiful environment in the area and for my family. So plantations are planted forests, typically in straight rows, consisting of primarily conifers that are used to establish forest on sites used for other purposes. A single species is usually selected based on its suitability for the site and its ability to compete against the vegetation that's currently present. So when you have a plantation, there are a few things that, that can happen. You can have invasive species, which you have to deal with. You have dog strangling vine and, and buckthorn and a few others. Uh, there are some issues like uh, we saw with the ash population that requires you to fill in that area when the ash trees die. You can get white blister on the white pines. But apart from that, it, uh, it's not a big process. So they mature and, you know, 25 years and then every 10 to 15 years you have to thin them. The difficulty is finding someone who wants to thin a small plantation. And of course, uh, I would not have access to those people. So thinning the plantation is a great way to both remove some of the poor quality and unhealthy trees, as well as remove some of the disease from the site, as well as creating growing space for native species and such as hardwoods and even other conifers coming up in the understory. So the continued work that we've been doing with BART on this property has allowed us to create a diverse patchwork of multi-age forests that really provides a lot of different stages of benefit. I, I didn't know anything about trees. I happen to love the trees and I've taken some courses in it, but really I rely on CBC to provide me with all that information. And uh, when we're looking at a forest or a plantation, they look at the species that I should be growing, the wind, they look at the soil, and they look at what would be healthy in that area and they sort of document what they should be planting. They give me a plan. And in addition to that, they assist us in funding, which is incredibly generous. I've got a, an ongoing relationship with CVC. Credit Valley's always been there to give me some great advice. If you look at this property, we've done bird houses, bat houses, uh, plantation planting, plantation thinning, larger species planting, you know, the four foot trees. Um, invasive species removal. So they've done a lot of those things that I wouldn't have been able to do myself. So they're a great resource and of both information and funding.